my maybe biggest aha moment is that the illness is us. All of the things that are plaguing me are me and my thoughts and me living in the past and me just living a program every day where one day overlaps with the other and overlaps with the other. And, and there's no magic because I'm not creating. I'm just dealing with a to-do list, thinking about the negative things that I'm thinking about. And that all creates a chemistry that then attracts more of that to you. Hello, hello, everybody. Welcome to Better Together. When you know better, you get better. That's what we do here every single day. Today is no exception, friends. If you're new to the show, we try to get better here in all areas of life every single day. And our Heal Squad is on that journey with us. And we are trying to find little nuggets that we can take into our day, apply, and live a better life. Today, we're going to be talking about how I am now living a completely new life. Thank you to Dr. Joe Dispenza, and thanks to his week-long meditation event. Uh, Our quote of the day is from Dr. Joe. The subconscious is where all your bad habits and behaviors that you want to change reside. Heal Squad, welcome back. My journey through this meditation event, we discussed yesterday in detail. I had to stop it because I have so much more to say, and I didn't want to over inundate you with too much in one episode. Um, I am sharing things that I learned, breakthrough moments, aha moments, and so much more, and how it's already starting to kind of seep into my outside world life. Uh, We talk about the Pentaverd premiere with Mike Myers and the surreal experience I had there. Also... I'll tell you something else that was funny. Like I started testing this in like little ways on the, on the journey that week. So, um, there was another moment, (laughs) this is so stupid, but I was like, we started eating at the cheesecake factory because it was across the street from the hotel and, uh, and shout out to the Grand Manchester Hyatt in San Diego because they really killed it. They handled a huge convention with so many of us and made it feel like a little boutique hotel, but it's this massive hotel. And their shower pressure was amazing. <laughs> Love Everything was that. great. I was like, this is like a five star hotel. And uh, and the 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 personal touch by all of the staff from housekeeping to the the baggage, um, doorman, the bellman and the, everybody was so amazing. Anyway, cheesecake factory was across the street and I had some not like favorite experiences that kind of made me stop going there. And we went and it was amazing. I got these cheeseburger sliders. (gasps) (laughs) No, no, not cheeseburger sliders, cheeseburger egg rolls with a Greek salad. And it was like crack. Wow. And so it was so amazing. And, uh, and so we were like, want to go again the next night. So we went again the next night. So now Sunday night, we try to get in. They're like, don't even try. We're so jammed. We're so booked. It's our craziest night. And so at the end of one of my meditations, I said, and we will get into the cheesecake factory tonight (laughs) as a joke. Okay. I just kind of put it out there. So when we finish, Marie was like, oh, so this one place is open, but there isn't like anything that I can really eat there. I go, no, no, no. We're going to the Cheesecake Factory and we're getting in. Now, mind you, every night we had a reservation, it was still like a little bit of a a challenge, right? It was like, we still had to wait. It was still like, eh. we get in. I walk right past the front desk. I go right over to the bar. I see two seats open. I ask the guy, I'm like, is this part of the wait list or can we just sit? He goes, no, you can sit here. Let me clean it off for you. Boom, Done walked right in and she just looked at me and she's like, what? And I was like, yeah, I'm like, I manifested this. (laughs) It was like a stupid little experiment, but even like my, my seat on the plane, I got upgraded in like the most random of ways, even though I had been trying to get on and I just kind of surrendered it. And then, so like little things happened. Um, but part two guys, we're talking all about, Um, the rest of the experience, the rest of the aha moments, Kevin's sharing with us what he's seen in me and what from the Joe Dispenza event from the, what did I say? We didn't say, okay. And, uh, and also my experience with Mike Myers and, uh, the Pentaver premiere, which friends please watch. We all need to laugh nowadays. It's uh, six 30 minute episodes on Netflix. It's already up there for you to binge. Let me know what you think. And uh, 
without further ado, here's part two. Okay, friends. So the premiere. I'm going in chronological order, I guess now, and then I'll get back to more of the meditation. So I go to the premiere last night for the Pentaveret and, you know, I have a small role in it. It's not like this, you know, big role. It's a little stunt casting kind of role. I get there and it was the most over the top response I've ever gotten from people for something like this. Everyone kept coming up to me telling me how I got the biggest laughs. Ken Jong, Keegan Michael Key, everyone. Mike Myers already had told me that when he personally called me to tell me that I got the biggest laughs. And I was like, oh my God, he's just being so nice. They all were saying, Keegan literally stopped me and told me and dissected what I did in this project and how, how great it was. Then Kelly Ripa's manager pulls me aside and is like, Mike Myers talked about you for like 20 minutes in the Q and a with David O Russell before the show. Oh my God. Before or after the show. And for like 20 minutes went on and on about how brilliant you were in this. I'm like, I'm nothing in this. I don't understand. I'm just like a teeny little thing. He's got all these super accomplished actors in here. And guys, it was so over the top. Every, the editor goes, we were scratching at the bottom of the barrel to find any more moments we had of you because we wanted to just keep, he, every two seconds, like, can we add more Maria here? Can we add more Maria here? I'm like, this is insane, insane. And I just, I've done this for so long and, and it was just really over the top. So at some points I thought I was being punked. I was like, there's just no way they're talking about me like this and that they... They think I was that funny and that the, Ken Jong was like, Maria, he's like, you took, you stole the movie. He's like, you, or not movie, the series. He's like, you kept, you made everyone laugh the hardest. And I'm like, how? It was insane. It was really insane. I, I went home flying higher than I was even That's flying so before. Awesome. And, and it was just, I mean, Mike Myers is just like so, so sweet and so kind. He had to cancel our interview and he said, I think I can do it tomorrow. He's like, you can hear, I can hear your voice is gone. Do not worry. It will happen when it's supposed to happen. I'm here whenever you can and want. Do not stress. And so he was so sweet. And he's like, you knocked it out of the park. You were so amazing or whatever. And I'm like, I can't even. Then I look at the picture. I took a selfie on the carpet with all of us. I looked at the picture and I didn't even realize when I took it, he's pointing at me and yes. he's giving a number one. Yes. I'm like, wait, what? <laughs> this is insane. Sorry, I've said, oh my God, what? This is insane no, 80,000 so times. Cool. But it's so surreal. So I have to think that, first of all, joy begets joy, right? We're magnets. He talks about it. We're positive and negative, positive at the top, negative at the bottom. We have an electrical charge. We're a magnet. That's why we talk about, remember, you're a magnet. What you put out, you get. And so I am just floating so happy and so high. I think that just all just punched me in the sweetest way back in the face because it was really over the top. Well, and I wonder too, Marie, it's like you talk about how you've learned now to love, how to love yourself, right? And yeah. see yourself. And I bet that that also is, you see yourself so then they see you even more. And they all, always did see you, but I wonder if it's attracting in a different way, you know? Yeah, I think... I, yeah, that was one. I mean, that was maybe the biggest moment of this whole week, I think, is I learned how to love myself. And how can you expect others to love you if you don't love you, right? And I learned how to open my heart. I had this moment actually with one of our heel squatters. She was there. Um, and uh, and she pulled me aside just before the walking meditation. And she said how she loves the show and how um, she's like, keep doing what you're doing because it's important. And I just was like, oh my God, she's so sweet. And I kept going. You know, we both went our ways and we did our walking meditation. And later I sit in my seat and I said, I want to see her again. Now I'm in a huge ballroom with 1,600 people. All of a sudden she pops up on the screen. I go, oh, how funny. I see where she's at kind of. I'll, I'll be able to find her later. I go to the bathroom. Who's the only other person in the bathroom? It's her. And so we're talking and she's like, if you ever want to get, you know, together on Zoom and do a meditation together. And I said, you know, I actually would love that. I'm walking back to my seat, guys. 
my heart is exploding. Like I think I'm having a heart attack again. Boom, boom, boom. Just the way I'm describing it, like imagine like hitting a huge drum. That was my chest. And I went back and I said, why is this feeling happening? And I go, oh, I let someone in. It was insane. So now I was in like serious heart coherence. So then I started planting more and things in the field. I was like, well, while we're here, (laughs) let's just double down on everything that I'm thinking I want and how I want to live my life fearlessly and stress-free and anger-free and worry-free and all of that stuff. And how I just want to be holly go lightly. I just want to be happy and floating and And I just kept saying, and when I do falter, because I will, I want to be able to get back up really quickly and switch gears because we're human and we're going to have human experiences and no one's perfect. I'm not Gandhi. I'm not, you know, the Dalai Lama. And even they're going to have their moments, right? So um, it was really, really special. Uh, Getting to feel your heart, I, I can feel it for others and I can feel it for animals. And, you know, I know my heart is big, but I really saw how big it was when that container was just expanding. And then I had it for myself too. It was really, really beautiful. Um, and so, yeah, I'm trying to think if I have any kind of bigger aha moments. Were there any of that connected with you that you wanted me to bring up, Queen? Let me see. I'm right, looking at my notes I took yesterday. I loved the... Maria realizing the abundance of time she has, not stressing about not having it. Guys, no, it's crazy. And that I don't know how to explain so that it can like be transferred to you other than you have to get into this work Mm. and you have to start meditating and it will calm your nervous system down and it will remind you that so much more is possible than you even know that, that you can just fall in love with yourself and, and dream again and create yeah, and that it all will like organize itself up there and then come to you. And, and yeah, I have an abundance of time. I'm not Mm -hmm. stressed about time. Now, hopefully I don't fall out of that, but I think if I stick with all the meditations and I really stay focused on waking up every day and asking, who do I want to be today? So my grateful list, which Kelsey, I guess, heard this morning. I did my window the was window. Open, um, <laughs> I said, you know, at the end of it, I said, you know, who do we want to be today, guys? I go, Winnie, do you want to be a bitch today? <laughs> <laughs> um, and so I'm reinforcing who I want to be when I go out. It's almost like, remember when I used to say, I'll go outside and I'll feel the fresh air and I'll say, today's going to be a great day. And when I'd say it, it would. It's the same thing. And so the grateful practice that I have at night and in the morning for sure has been super amazing because like I said, gratefulness is the ultimate state of receivership. You already feel like you have it and that's why it will come. Um, You're not waiting for the experience to dictate your emotions. You're already there. Mm. Um, But now I'm asking myself at night because he says, ask yourself, how did I do today? And what will I do better tomorrow? Really great practice. So I'm making a little note card to leave on my mantle. And then in the morning, who do I want to be? Um, But basically, like the coherent brain and heart thing is really powerful because, like I said, it's your Wi-Fi signal. The coherent brain sends the signal out and the coherent heart drags it back in. So it's it's your Wi-Fi signal and it's it's a faster way to create because in oneness, there's no space. And so um, it's, it's much more powerful than trying to, you know, force will all that to happen. You just kind of set it out there and you let it float back. Um, Cause every possibility ex- exists there. He's talked about a pendulum, which I thought was really cool. He's like, when you have a pendulum, the longer side, right, um, it takes long. It's you know the pendulum takes time to go from one side to the other, but at the top, it doesn't, and that's the difference. So this is the three D world down the bottom, and at the top is the five D world, where there's no space. It's just there already. That's so interesting. Yeah. Wow. Um, 
there were so many, like I said, where is my energy going? Um, and he talked about how these elevated emotions, they upregulate your immune system by like 50%. So that's why people are being healed here is your immune system is getting an upgrade. Your immune system is getting time to relax and just be and, and repair and heal. Um, I'm trying to see if there are any other like aha moments I wanted to share with you guys in here. Feel the feeling ahead of the experience deletes the separation from the event. Um, and yeah, he says, take yesterday, set it on to tomorrow. Now you've lost your free will to a set of programs. You're on autopilot. Your body is dragging you into the same predictable future. So, friends, we go into the next dimension and more consciousness. And now your door to that quantum is open and you can plant whatever seeds you want. And every time we connect, we come into a new body and we're heading into a new future. And you're not the same every single time you come out of these meditations. And I see that every single time I'm coming into a new body that's just, you know, forming into its new thing. So I wrote my notes here of everything I'm going to do every day. I'm going to be doing my pineal gland meditation every day. I'm going to um, do my walking meditations. Um, there's some 15 minute meditations to change your energy, which I think you'll love queen. Um, I or like that. Both of you, queen, queen, Queens. queen, Pooja. Um, so like, he's like, if I get knocked off, he's like, I'll be like, excuse me. 15 minutes goes mm, in. So good. Cleans the energy. Um, here's a good one about the gratitude stuff. Gratitude is a state of receivership. Body doesn't know if it's a real life event or not. Then you draw the energy into the limbic brain and it sends the frequency to all the cells and then your heart gets coherent and then you start to draw the event to you. Again, all of this is just like my, my notes. I'm not teaching you guys this. I'm just sharing what I learned and, um, and what I believe was, you know, some of the biggest kind of aha moments for me so that you guys can maybe connect and say, Oh, okay. I think this is something, um, that is worth me doing. So any questions, Queens? No, I'm just really excited to like, to grow with you and watch you grow through this. I feel like even the little bit we've talked about it. I had this kind of like aha moment yesterday when I got home after you were telling us about this, I was like, Kelsey, cause my stomach's been flaring up. And I was like, we've, you've, you've said this to me, but I think it just finally, finally clicked with me. I'm like, yeah, because what you resist will persist. You're mm -hmm. just being so like negative about, Oh, it's flaring. Oh, it's this, you're being triggered by this. And I was like, yeah. when things were going well in your SIBO journey, why? like, because I was so positive because I was so like, like the people at the natural path were like, Oh my gosh, you should be our SIBO doula. You're so like light and positive through this all. And now I'm not, and now it's flaring. So anyways, it's just been, I've been listening to you. And I was like, last night slash this morning, I made the decision. I was like, no, like you're in control of this. You yes. and your mind, you are in control of this. Yes. You don't need to spend another $500 on a mold test. You don't need to spend it like, yeah. Cause here's the thing. No. Your body is begging you to love it. Right. <laughs> and yes. you're hating it. Yes. Right? Yep. So for you and for everybody, for all of us, it's trying to overcome the thoughts that are keeping you enslaved to your past and, exactly. and the negative emotions that are coming in. It's like, I catch them now and I'm like, nope, change. And literally what I say to myself is, what do I want? Mm not what do I not want or what do I want? How do I want today to be? What's the future I want to create? Anytime some negative thought comes in, I'm, I'm, I'm focusing on what I want because I now really know that I'm the creator of my life. And I really think, I was saying it to Mike Myers last night, I said, I think when we're young, we dream. And even though it's so far away, right? We're feeling it as we're dreaming it. And that's why it comes fast or that's why it comes, right? I dreamed 
that I was going to be in LA and in the entertainment world and working at Entertainment Tonight, even though I didn't want to be an entertainment host. I don't know why that popped into my head, but I, I saw all the things that I have now. And then I stopped and I stopped because of so many things, burnout, not taking care of myself, not guarding my thoughts, let's say not protecting my energy. Um, and not having boundaries, letting people walk all over me, whatever it was, all of these things, and not really not realizing I was in control and not loving myself. And, um, and I had people along the way who said, no one can hurt you but you. But I didn't understand it. And now I understand it. Right. And so now I've opened up the floodgates to possibilities again. And I'm so excited and I'm planning the most adventurous, fun life. Oh, I saw my babies, by the way. I saw, I saw, I thought it was an alien at first. I'm like, what's that? Mm. And then all of a sudden it was a fetus that came into my, was coming zooming in. And I go, oh, is it only one of you? I saw a second one. I'm like, oh. And then I saw the real life baby at one point, one of them. And I was like, it was similar to my dream I had where I was like, I love you. I love you. And I was so happy with this beautiful, explosive face. And then I saw my children hugging me as an adult. And I was like, oh, they like me. Oh my God, this is so cool. It was like the most special feeling in the world that these like adults loved me and that they were my babies. And because Kevin and I joke that they're going to hate me because no. <laughs> I was going to be too strict. No. <laughs> But it was unreal. And I'll tell you, the other thing that was really cool is I was never tired. We were waking up at three in the morning, four in the morning. I was never tired this week. And there were moments, yes, in the teachings, you know, you're learning neuroscience. And so you're, you know, I would kind of fall asleep with my eyes open a couple of times But other than that, I've never been so energized in my life. And so that's why I'm not afraid to wake up in the middle of the night and do a 90 minute meditation because I know how it makes me feel. uh, And I know that I'm creating the life that I want and the life that I know I deserve. And so it's really been profound and moving and exciting and emotional and just, I, I am so grateful to uh, Marie for bringing me on this journey. I'm so grateful to my friend, Kristen Prouty for helping me with, uh, with Dr. Joe and he's going to be coming on the show. And, um, and I'm really grateful for the women who gave their testimonials because they showed us what's possible. It's like, he talks about like the four minute mile, like once someone's done it, then you know, you can do it too. And the power of the mind, you know, those people that came in in wheelchairs, may not have believed that they could ever walk. And I don't know if the body was changing or the mind was changing. I'm pretty sure it was the mind was changing that made them walk. Because I know with my mom, she had that experience too, where she couldn't even lift her leg in the morning at Cedars. And then we took her to this church and they did this healing on her. And boom, she started walking back and forth. And my dad and I were sitting there with our, our mouths agape, like we couldn't even believe it. She had had like a 14 hour day at that point, at least. And she's floating back and forth. We're like, what's going on? But when the mind believes, when you believe in something, it will be, but you got to be careful of what you believe. So, uh, um, I like that really, really powerful stuff. And I can't, I can't recommend enough. Get on to Joe get the formula, start there and then go into the progressive Queen is going to be doing it. I know Kevin yes, is, Kevin's just like seeing me and he's like, oh, I mean, how can I say no? I, <laughs> I, I didn't want to, but yes, I'm in. <laughs> so I hope, uh, I hope this was helpful. I didn't have a, a real kind of plan of how this was going to unfold on the show today. I was going to take notes and write it and, and all of this, but I just felt like speaking from the heart and speaking from you know, however it was going to come out was going to be the right way. And, uh, and I hope, I hope it was helpful to you guys. I cannot wait to hear your journeys and mine's going to continue. I'm going to go to an advanced follow-up very soon and continue the work. I'm also going to train to be a healer. 
They mm-hmm. sh- they showed, by the way, they took healers into women's prisons. They went to a women's prison that was so bad and so filthy and so disgusting that the women sleep standing up. And they had such profound changes in these women that the women begged for them to come back because they felt so good. And they took these healers and they put them in front of blood that was, you know, cancer ridden and healed the cancer in the blood. Like, so now they're, they're waiting till they have like 50% official results to start working at children's hospitals and to start doing this. And Dr. Joe is really cool because he's not about the accolades. He tries to keep everything from what we see, like to a price point and not try to raise prices because now demand is higher. He just wants this work out there for people and he wants people to heal themselves. And, you know, he's, he's a special guy. And I'm really, really grateful for this experience because it's forever changed me. I am never using my energy reserve for all of those emotions. And if it starts, I'm going to stop it really, really fast. And I'm just going to be so committed. Actually, one of our shirts I'm going to make for us for the Heel Squad is, I am no longer living in my past. I am only creating my future. And I'm making those shirts for us. And if you feel it, you can wear it. But it's going to be my reminder. And my other reminder is, to default to gratitude and love. Because every time I did that, things got better. If I was feeling a pain, I was able to get rid of the pain, which is going into my heart and being grateful. Guys, it was like magic, magic, magic. And uh, yeah, I mean, I could talk about this for days and and maybe this, I'll look at my notes and if there was anything I missed that was kind of big. Did I get all the things in your notes? Yes, you did. Okay. You did. Um, but I have I have more follow-ups that we'll do on other episodes because okay. I think you could talk about this forever. And I really do. I wrote this down. I was like, this is such Maria's sweet spot, like talking about this and then the grief, like you just radiate and it's so cool. And like I said, I've heard it from millions of different people, but when you said it yesterday like it just really clicked for me i'm just really i'm excited to keep learning from you i just really do feel like this is your sweet spot and you you teach it in a way that's digestible and not overwhelming which i feel like is often it's often overwhelming and we feel like we have to do all these things but it's like no so i'm just i'm excited to keep learning Thanks, Queen. Through you and borrowing your benefits oh my gosh the dogs were borrowing the benefits i came home and chubby Who's just like, just like kind of sad and just, you know, just this pure little angel was exploding with happiness. And I mean, we know energy begets energy, right? If I come in all miserable, you guys are going to feel it. And the converse is, the the opposite is true, right? Kevin, would you like to say anything before we go? Hi. Hi, Kevin. Hello, Kevin. Kevin just invaded. Did you have anything to say, boo? With regards to? Um... I don't know the what new you're Maria. seeing. The new Maria. <laughs> yeah. I just see such an energy shift. And um, yeah, it's, it's, it's amazing. I mean, I don't want to even point out the stuff because I don't <laughs> want to get in your head and jinx it. <laughs> Guys, I've been waking up with a huge smile on my face. We're in the car and I have a huge smile on my face. I'm looking at Kev. But by the way, I see... It's almost like an out of body experience where I see how I'm looking at all of you differently. It's it's a wild thing to feel. Well, <laughs> I noticed so we have this problem where uh oh my phone, no no, my phone, you know, the Bluetooth on my phone activates speakers in the bathroom. <laughs> that if this I'm, is the best. <laughs> if I'm listening to podcasts or you know, YouTube and then it comes in there. And your reactions are borderline violent <laughs> when it happens. Because I get startled. And it happened again post uh, Joe Dispenza. And you're like, oh, it's so funny. Like the music came on when I was walking. I'm like, what? Normally you are just violent. Yeah. And I was yeah. like, wow. Well, you know what I learned, guys? I'm going to, sorry, I'm going to keep going for a second. This was another moment. So in the beginning, so when I was going into my meditation room here at the house, I needed complete silence. I needed all these things. Don't distract me. I could hear you guys out here through my headphones. I'm like, please be quiet, blah, blah, blah. So we get in there and 
the woman next to me is making a lot of noise. And I'm like, how could she make so much noise, have some self-awareness, blah, blah, blah. And I'm getting annoyed and frustrated. And then I said, Maria, you have to be about your healing. You can't focus on that. And I kept hearing that, right? Don't focus on that. Focus on you. Okay. And he talks about how the environment, we allow the environment to dictate our feelings. We should be able to dictate our feelings, right? So I'm getting annoyed. And um, and I don't remember if this was the same thing, but at one point in the early in the week, the wo- this woman falls on me. And I'm like, oh my God, she like totally knocks me out of my, my trance. How am I supposed to focus? Her bracelets are jiggling, but she was sweet. So I was trying to like, you know, but I was, I was so frustrated and now my meditation's ruined and I'm trying to get back in. And then it's so hard to, and I realized, oh, she's here to teach me that I've gotten really, really precious with distractions that I've gotten so precious about like a whisper or like a no, little, no- shut up, honey. not true. Honey, shut up. <laughs> and I got, <laughs> and I was like, oh, okay. So when you're there, you see your patterns of behaviors and your thoughts and the way you act so clearly. And you also see the part you don't see in real life. You also see that you need to fix it and that it's you that needs to be fixed. And so we come out of the meditation and she was just an angel. She's like, I'm so sorry. I'll move. I, yeah, I, I, I'm so sorry. Like She was self-aware enough to. Yes. Oh. She was, she's an angel. She was a really beautiful soul and was so sorry. And I learned from her that this was something I had to fix. And throughout the rest of the week, if I did hear any distractions, I learned to shut them out and to just focus on me because it's about me getting better. And <clears throat> towards the end of the week, another woman fell on me. By the way, I had a phantom fall too. So the first woman who fell on me in the next meditation, she was gone. I felt her fall on me again. And I asked her, I go, did you fall back there? She goes, yeah. I go, I wonder if it was the same time because I felt you fall. And I was like, wait, but she's not next to me. Oh, that's wild. It was wild. So another woman falls on me and, and instead of being frustrated, I was, I went into my heart and I was compassionate and I was like trying to help her, which was such a better feeling. Right. So like, I, I realized that my default in life has to just be love and compassion and, and, um, and, and not frustration or anger or annoyance. Like we're so precious about like being annoyed by somebody who cuts us off or whatever. We don't, we don't know what's going on in their life. And obviously they don't know what you now know, right? You're more aware. And it was just, there were so many lessons in it along the way that were just very loud. And I knew that I had to change myself for myself me being annoyed by all those little things was taking up all the energy in my cup for the day. And then guess what? How many coffees do you need to get through? How stressed are you? How exhausted are you? Always exhausted, always exhausted, never enough time. And now all of that's gone. I have endless time. So then you had them removed. What? The women who fell, you had them Shut removed. Shut up, honey. Oh no, God. I did not. <laughs> 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 then Maria went up to Dr. Joe and said, please remove them. Uh, I would like uh, seat <laughs> 6C removed, please, as well as uh, 9D. Thank you. Like Anne Hathaway in We Crashed. Yes. Yeah. And I watched also so many women vibrating so intensely. Like even going into the healing, there was one woman I was talking to. She was like, maybe like early sixties. And she, all of us were so concerned over whether we were doing it right. And a lot of us were having a hard time getting over the past, uh, the, the fact that we're so type A, such overachievers. We wanted to do it perfect. We wanted to do it right. And the whole point was just surrender and do it and do your interpretation. And that's going to be right. And that, that, intensity of trying to be perfect and trying to do it right is what's killing us. And I watched this one woman and I told her, I said, listen, this is what I tried. You can try it your way. She's like, I can do it that way. I go, yeah. I go, I, I think that it's like, whatever works for you, you just got to like, let go a little bit because when you let go, the mystical comes. So anytime in the meditations, I would try to force anything. 
it would ruin it. Anytime I surrendered, oh my God, it was like bliss. But we don't surrender a lot as type A overachievers. And we also, as women, take on everything. So we're just used to vibrating like at an explosive level. I watched this one woman the next day go into her second healing and the frantic like intensity, her trying to find a friend and flag them down when she's going into her own healing. And I was like, this is how we are. We are not present and we worry so much about so many other things and other people. I've spent my life worrying about other people and it doesn't mean that I'm not going to be compassionate, but I'm going to save my energy reserves because I deserve them too. I'm not going to be worrying about everybody and every little detail in their lives. That's killed me. By the way, that's not just worrying about their well-being. It's also worried what they think of you. Yes. Worried if you're letting them down. All of it. You know, all of it. The guilt, the this is the that. It's killing us, guys. Mm-hmm. Actually, let me say, ladies, it's killing us. It's It really is. And we have to surrender and we have to... And by the way, when you surrender... You have to just know that everything's going to be okay. I think that we're so worried about everything collapsing around us if we don't keep holding it up, but everything's going to collapse within us if we don't. Our health is collapsing little by little, brick by brick. And so find this work before it's too late, before you have to really try to do this work and overcome your pain. Because when you are sick and you're in it, like that woman, Evie, who's going to come on the show, I mean, the intensity of the cancer all over her body, I, I could feel she was on morphine, guys. It was really bad. And she had to do this work despite the pain. Don't wait to get to that point where you have such an uphill battle. It's still possible. It's hard because the pain in the and the pain meds will interfere with her mm-hmm. probably process, right? Yeah. So you Oof. you really got to find this work fast. And I'm telling you, I've done so many things. This is the way. This, I kept hearing it and saying it the whole time, like, this is the way, this is the way, this is the way. So Maria, tell us, for someone like a Kevin and a Kelsey who have ADD off the charts, Mm -hmm. how do we start? (laughs) Yeah, I think you start by wanting yourselves to get better Mm. more than you care about the conditions of your life, more than you care about your diagnoses, more than you care about what you think they are. And stop being so attached to, I have ADD, stop being Mm. so attached to, I have these problems. Everyone has these problems and they're Mm. overcoming them. As he says, ordinary people are doing the extraordinary every single day in this work. So detach from all of the labels and just go in and do it and know that whatever you do is is going to improve you and be enough. Mm. And you're going to keep building on it. You might have to watch a class twice to get it, whatever it takes. Just be patient and loving with yourself as you're going through it. I'm not going to lie. There were moments, like I said, in the course where I was getting tired or like sleepy because it's so much neuroscience and it's a lot of complicated stuff to learn. Now he teaches it in the most uncomplicated of ways, but you know, it's, you got to just be patient with yourself yeah. and you got to just keep on getting up and trying and know that every little bit, the few moments you do click in, are going to keep upgrading you and upgrading you and upgrading Mm. you. Just be patient. But know this is the way, like I'm telling you. It's the way I feel and the way I am is just completely different and I'm never going back. Like I'm never going back. And I think that for me to wake up after going to bed at midnight at three in the morning to do a meditation for 90 minutes to get like three hours and then just another two and a half on the other side and to feel as good as I do is evidence that this is really powerful stuff. Mm -hmm. So um, all I can say is just, just get in there and get going and trying and keep talking about it because he talks about like when you fire and wire it in your brain, that's when the neural um, connections happen, right? You build all these new neural synaptic connections and What happens is when you learn something, they start to connect and connect and they build stronger connections. But then when you stop, eventually they fade away Mm. and they die, right? Like if you learn to play an instrument, if you don't do it forever, there might be some memory left in there, but 
you got to keep firing and wiring. So he, he talks about, you have to be able to keep explaining this. So I'm happy to keep explaining it to you because it's only yes, benefiting please. me mm-hmm. to do it and to keep learning and keep, you know, I have my notebook with my notes and every day I'm reading it because I want to transport myself back into those vibrations and I want to keep firing and wiring all this information so that I've got it locked in and I understand the process and every day I'm understanding it better. And that's why I'm going to go to more of these because, you know, you might retain 60% of it. You might have only caught 60% of it. Well, if you keep going, you're going to keep. So that's why I said, rewatch it if you have to. Rewatch it till it's really underst- understood. Um, Your notes, would you come home at the end of the night and kind of like mind dump? No. Mm. No, I did it in in the moment. Ah. I took notes. And then after each meditation, whether it was in the next break, I would journey, journal my meditation experiences because I wanted to see the journey. And you see like from the beginning, it's like I couldn't control my thoughts. There were so many coming in and it was so stressful, but then I kept trying and I stuck with it. And then little by little, it goes to, oh my God, I went to another world. It was unbelievable. It was like the coolest experience ever. I came out of my body. You see the progression. Did other people have that same experience, Maria? Yeah. Wow. Yeah, some people didn't. My, my friend Marie didn't have the same things yeah. that I had, right? Mm-hmm. And so it can be frustrating too yeah. if other people are having these mystical experiences and you aren't. But you have to just know that you're everyone's in a different place and everyone's, everyone's surrendering differently. You know me, Kev. I go all in when I do something. So I'm going to have, you know, maybe a head start on somebody. I also think there were places where, for example, Marie, when she was doing the pineal gland meditation, was having what we call like the brain orgasm. I haven't really had one yet. Mm. I've had like a blissful, maybe mini orgasm, but I'm like, ah, you know when you had an orgasm or not. So I haven't had one yet, but she has. So everyone's having different experiences. And I think that we're all meant to have what we have at that time. So, and not uh, fight yourself when you're not, and not fight. Yeah. Like, I was so frustrated when I couldn't get the energy centers. I'm like, I don't feel anything. And then when I felt them, it was like, whoa, okay. And then guess what? I've had challenging times sometimes since. I'm like, eh, I kind of feel my root. Mm. Oh, that one's really powerful. I'll feel some, not others. And it's just the journey. You're just doing what you can, how you can in each moment. And every time is going to be different. The, the goal is to stick with it. And the goal is, you know, every meditation, no matter how challenging it was, is a victory if you stuck with it. And that's what he says. So. I love that. Yeah. Feels really good. I want you guys to feel like this. Me too. Because I didn't know it was possible. It's magical. Kev, you love time travel. Oh my God. I I was in an Egyptian world. Oh my gosh. I was in Jerusalem. I was in, um, I mean, I saw so many crazy places. I was underwater. I was in the amphibian world. Well, you know what I was thinking when you said that, Maria? I feel like we do that a lot as kids. You know, like I had a dream, a reoccurring dream. I literally wrote it down when you were saying that because it jogged my memory. I had a reoccurring dream as a kid that I would like go into this box and it would like take me to another world. I, I, it's like the most, I know it's wild, but it's yeah. like, so, you know, it's possible. And as kids, we don't, we're not so judgmental and we're more open. Mm-hmm. So we do these things. And it's like, I feel like you're going back into that state of play, right? The state yeah. of like possibility. So I agree. I'm like, I want to travel again. Well, queen, you are going to have those experiences. I know yeah. where you're going to go to other places and yeah. you, Kevin, when we did the energy healings with John Amaral, who's going to be on the show very soon. Um, John Amaral is doing this kind of energy healing. He understands the quantum physics and the field and the energy around all the centers. And that's why he's able to work so well healing us. But the key is, guys, you can heal yourself too, right? So he can come in and realign you. But the second you go back to those negative thoughts and those negative emotions and all those things, you're just going to get out of line again, right? So boo, when we were at John's, um, body, uh, body healing event, your body was flailing all yeah. over the place. Yeah. Mine wasn't. And I kept saying, well, why, why am I not moving? I must be so stiff, which obviously I was right. I'm definitely more and you're just looser. So maybe because you're looser, your body 
can take on that energy. I'm like a snake, baby. You are like a snake. You um, move in groove. That's right. So you might have more of the body experiences, and that'll be really profound for you. I would love to go and see a Three Stooges comedy being filmed in the 1930s. I yeah. want to go meet Curly and Larry and Mo. And you can. You could, Kev. And you can. All right, I'm going to see him. You so you really exciting. can. You you would get into brain and heart coherence. You'd go into black space and you'd plant that seed up there. And then you would feel the feeling of already having happened. And you would ask for this, this mystical experience to come. And then you would just go into black space. And then little by little, things start to appear. I saw a lot of old people coming into me. And that's when I realized, oh, no coincidence. I love old people. I want to get Larry find some character actor work. Oh and God. I want to see Curly take on a serious role. And I feel like if I got involved, I could make them a lot more money and they might even live, have lived longer. I'm dead. <laughs> I think this is hilarious. So. Keep but you can. You yep. can do all of that. I'm going to. So everything's Mo's fine. Mo was always the boss. He always had money in his pocket. I'm I'm more worried about Curly and Larry. <laughs> Curly especially, but Larry too. Well, Where's this show gone? I know. Again, I, was, I would love to see Larry just as a character actor, supporting in a supporting role. Kev, you don't want to go back and see Lou? Oh, Captain Lou? Yeah. Captain Lou's so recent. I would love to see Captain Lou Albano, but it's a more recent. You're so funny. I think I would say, by the way, you would be smart to see Captain Lou Albano get pointers on how to manage somebody because we know he's a guiding light. Then go see the Stooges. Mm -hmm. You're right. right. Thank you, Kelsey. You're welcome. Yeah. I had a whole conversation with my cousin Narge and I hugged him twice. Um, I had a conversation with your dad. Wow. And, and it was real. It was real. My mom was talking to me. I didn't get to see my mom, but I talked to my mom. <sighs> well, that's it, everybody. Um, for now, because I'm going to be continuously having experiences and I will continue to share the journey. And I hope you share your journey with me as well, because I would love to hear um, what is working for you. And I can't wait for the Queen's. To have their experience. Me too. It's going to be amazing. Good bunny ears, Kevin. Yeah. Yeah. Bunny ears. And then, you know, what's good is when you guys do get to an event, because I think that I shouldn't be a part of it with you. I feel like two newbies should be together so you don't feel competitive. Not competitive, like in a bad way, but to be comparing. Mm. Because I think that that is, as they say, comparison is the thief of joy. Uh, And you never want to compare yourself or your journey, but... Sometimes it's inevitable you'll feel that. So I think you guys will have a good time and I'll I'll introduce you to some of the team there that will help you when you have questions because, you know, in the beginning, you're going to have questions like, is this normal? Is that normal? What, what's going on here? Um, and they'll be really helpful for you on the journey and they helped me as well. So um, I've already joined up for the newsletter uh, that he does. I never sign up for newsletters. I already signed up for the healing um the, he does a once a month Zoom call. I'm doing that. Although I'm on a plane the day he does the first one, but whatever. Maybe I'll be able to tune in from the plane. Who knows? And uh, I'm all in. It's an exciting step forward. It's an exciting step forward. <laughs> Green juice. Green juice. Green juice. Green juice. It's an exciting step forward. Great show. Yeah. Maybe uh, Elizabeth Holmes needs a little Dr. Joe too. She probably does. Everybody yeah. does. Mm-hmm. So that's that. Thank you, Maria. Signing out from my super elevated happy place that I am very grateful to be in. In the meantime, if you want the cliff notes of these episodes, you can go to mariamenunos.com. We like to share those with you so that you can get your kind of, what are you doing, honey? <laughs> what are He's you tapping doing? his third eye. Yeah, I'm doing uh, some EFT work. Oh, okay, great. Um, okay. We like the life hacks blogs for you guys so that if you're listening to this on your hike, but you want to remember the big moments, you can get them there. You also can get all my favorites in the fashion beauty uh, world as well. You can join us for uh, on Patreon there if you want um, to be a part of our Patreon at the $10 level, you get ad free shows. You get to be a part of our monthly heel events. Um, and, uh, the $25 tier is our super, super insider heel squad. Um, then there's some extra special bonuses in there. And if you haven't yet left us a review, 
I ask you kindly to take a second, just click on the link in the summary of this episode and uh, let us know what you think of the show, what you think of us, what you think of the content. It really helps people to know kind of what they're going to get here. And I read every single one of them and I'm so grateful. I wish I could hit reply on all of them and it would just send a direct message to you to say thank you and how much you move me every time I read them. So thank you and uh, we love you and be nice people, make good choices and be present.